Liberty Conference grows, uh, I appreciate the opportunity to come here and speak. And I was thinking about Liberty today, what would I say? And it's interesting that we're holding a conference on Liberty. Liberty is most precious when you're losing it. It's kind of like an umbrella. You really need it when it rains. Otherwise, it's just something to wag around. And I think the fact that we're assembled here is because we're losing our liberty. In the uh, Declaration of Independence, it says, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. They didn't say you die equal. They said you were created equal, equal opportunity. And they're endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights that among these are life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. Pursuit of happiness in legal terms includes property. When you get your paycheck, it should be yours, not an obligation to the government. Our founding fathers included no income taxes in the original Constitution. Graduated income tax is a Marxist ideology right out of the Communist Manifesto. When I was a sophomore in college, I wrote a thesis on Karl Marx. And I got an education during that research that has stuck with me all of my life. You, Marxism is a wonderful theory. It just is contradictory to human nature, and it won't work. Look at Cuba, look at Russia, look at North Korea. The poorest places on earth is where the Marxist theory is most widespread. Freedom and liberty for you to choose to pursue whatever endeavor you want to pursue and to compete in the marketplace of products and ideas is what has made America great. You know, we're looking at charter schools. You've got a state monopoly on education. Monopolies cannot excel because there's no competition. If they fail, they get paid. If they work, they get paid. And you can't have an increase in growth and ideas and productivity without competition. It's just essential. It's just like the food chain, eat or be eaten. It's cruel, but that's the way it's designed. And out of that cruelty comes success and comfort for everybody. It's each person seeking their individual desires not some corporation tapping you into third or fourth grade to grow you up to run a certain machine or something like that. Humans are not cogs in an industrial production. They are individuals made in God's image to pursue the gifts and the inclination he has put in each one of us. And without that freedom and liberty, you're going to be in bondage. We have lived in the freest society in the world since mankind has been known. They say uh, that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. That's us. I don't consent to the SPLOS tax. And I have a right to oppose it. I, I don't understand why anyone would vote themselves a tax. This city and county grew, developed, prospered for 114 years without a SPLOS. They started in 1987. The SPLOS we have now has been in effect. And it was instituted by the government lying to the people telling you that over half of the tax is paid by visitors. That simply is not true. And I have challenged them on that and they can't prove it. Your tax 
and my budget, my house and cars are paid for, the biggest item in my budget is utilities. I've got tax on electricity, natural gas, telephone, cables, cell phones, plus in the, in the marketplace here in the county, manufacturers pay tax. PCA told me they pay about a million dollars a year in sales taxes from stuff that they buy. Those are not retail sales taxes. They're sales taxes. Now they quote a figure, the city does, from retail sales pull factor. It doesn't include the items that I mentioned that you buy, nor construction purchases, nor wholesale purchases. They have been lying for 20 years and we've been believing them and no one has challenged them. I have challenged them and they cannot prove their position. So people are greedy. They want something for nothing. And they have made people believe that you're getting the visitor's money. The people that visit our county is paying over half of the sales taxes. From the best, I went to Georgia Power and got their sales tax receipts that they pay the city and county, which is about $4 million a year. Concord Electric pays about a million and a half. That's five and a half million. The total sales tax that's collected each year is about 25 million. Just those two companies are paying over 20% of it. And they're trying to make me believe that people coming from out of town, what they spend is overriding what I pay every month in my utilities. It, it just can't be true and it's not true. So what we need is a leadership in this county and I, I sent them an email. I said, look, you're driving forward full speed, pedal to the metal, looking in the rear view mirror. We're in a recession. What you do in a recession is not what you do in a vibrant economy where just about anything will work. It's like a train going downhill. You got two engines pulling 150 cars. It runs good downhill. When you start uphill, on an incline, that's what a recession is. Things are harder, business has slowed down. You can't run that train uphill and keep adding more cars onto it and cutting down the fuel supply and cutting down the air supply to the engine. A, a train is a good example of a business person. Diane and I run a business. We've got 11 employees who have all together about 20 dependents. So there's about 30 people dependent on what we do. We're the engine of that little train. Now some trains are bigger and have more engines to them. But my point is, if you stifle me, I'm paying over 60% in income taxes, sales taxes, state taxes, and there's no incentive. I could hire more people and expand my business if I could keep my money and invest it. But I can't. I'm giving it to somebody else to spend. You just look at what the government does with your money. Locally, this floss tax, I don't need to spend a half a million dollars of my tax money to redo an alley downtown. It's going to be so hot in that alley in the summertime, you're not going to be able to stay in it. I mean, it's hot under those big oak trees on the courthouse square where it's open. You get in an alley, but that's where they want to spend a half million dollars. They want to put a farmer's market downtown. Look, we got two farmer's markets south of town. We got umpteen grocery stores here that sell all kind of produce. We don't need a farmer's market but somebody wants a farmer's market and it's only a half million dollars. We're paying over $1.2 million a year in rainwater runoff fees. Anybody with a roof or a driveway that owns property is paying a runoff fee, about 1.2 million a year. They've been doing that for eight or nine years, plus they want another three and a half million for drainage issues. Look, we're still paying a million 1.2 million a year, every year. So 
what I see is people, it's kind of like the government. If you don't spend it, you lose it. They could have easily put in for a two-year spouse, bought a library for, they say, $13 million, uh, buy an auditorium for $20 million, and have $17 million left over for a bonus. Run it for two years, shut it off, give the people a break. But they won't do that. They want to run it for six years and buy every imaginable thing that you can think of. They used to rebuild their heavy equipment in the city like private industry does. Now they put new ones in. They uh, dispose of the old ones and put new ones in. That, you know, I'm driving a truck out there with 150,000 miles on it. I consider it half wore out. They would consider it a wreck. But nobody's buying trucks for me. I have to buy them myself. So I would encourage you to vote no on this tax. I've got some flyers outside, a thing that I sent out that goes through all of the reasons not to do it. Uh, government cannot control its desires. When the city sent out their request to their departments, they got back $261,500,000 worth of needs reported back that they needed. Now the total budget for this FLOST is $25 million a year for six years or $150 million for the city and county. But just the city wanted $261 million from their various departments. There is no end. You know, I could give you a tablet and let you make a list of everything you wanted. <laughs> the problem is I'd be responsible for buying it. I, I, I told a guy that works in the city, I said, it's like sending y'all to see Santa Claus at the mall and you go out there and sit on his knee and tell him everything you want. The problem is I have to pay for it. And if your kids went out to the mall and told Santa everything they wanted and then Santa gave it to them and sent you a bill, you'd be bankrupt. So vote against the sploss. Thank you.